Hello, Christ Chapel. Pastor Ryan here. You know, a favorite tradition of our church, something that we've been doing for a little over 20 years now, is to dedicate a church service to our graduating seniors, to recognize them, to encourage and challenge and bless them as they finish one chapter of their lives and head into another one. Uh, this year is unique for obvious reasons, but it is still so important that we carry on this cherished tradition of our youth program in the way that we can. So we have eight students graduating next month, and here they are. My name is Bennett Sprague, and next fall I will be attending Washtenaw Community College in Michigan for a year. After that, I'll pursue a degree in mechanical engineering technology at Rochester Institute of Technology. Epic has meant so much to me over the past years, and I'm so grateful for everybody. I'm really going to miss you guys. Hi, my name is Cameron Ciarcia. Um, in September, I plan to study social work, and I just wanted to say thank you to everyone at Chris Chapel for being such a supportive community to me. Hi, my name is Tyler Nichols, and for the fall, I will be attending Gordon College, and I will be majoring in business, and I just want to say thank you for these past five years I've spent going to Epic. Hi, my name is Emma, and I'm so excited to be attending Messiah University as a nursing major in the fall. I'm so grateful to all of my Epic leaders and to my Christ Chapel family for providing me with an encouraging, faith-filled community that has helped me to grow in my faith and pursue God's will for my life. I'm so blessed by the fellowship that this body has offered me. Hello, my name is Alipatidin. Uh, I'm going to a two-year years community college at Housatonic, Housatonic, and I'll be studying CNT manufacturing, and uh, I just want to say thank you for my Christian journey. Hi, my name is Sam Williams. I'm a graduating senior at Daniel Hand. Uh, for September, my plans are to attend Maine Maritime College in Castine, Maine. I want to study MTO, which is Marine Transportation Operations. And I, I just want to say thanks to Pastor Ryan, all the staff at Epic, the staff at the church. I mean, all fantastic people. Wonderful experience. I did Epic for four years. And I also want to say thanks to my peers. Uh, I wish the best for everyone. And let's get through this time. Uh, hi, this is Grace. I've been going to Epic for two years now. Uh, my friend Tyler invited me, and I really, I'd really i love to thank him for that because it's just been a really a great experience, and I look forward to it every single week. And um, actually, especially Pastor Ryan has been really helpful for me, uh, uh, helping me get over things. Like, um, I was really nervous to go up on stage, but he wanted me to join the worship band. And it was uh, it's great to play with everyone every week, and I'm really going to miss everyone. But um, I'm really thankful for everyone, and... Uh, God bless all of you. Hello, Christ Chapel. My name is Isaac Lerner. I would like to begin by saying thank you to the church, and specifically Epic, for providing a place where I could grow my faith and also serve, anywhere from the soundboard to being able to travel to the Dominican Republic. I am proud to announce that I will be attending Virginia Tech as a member of the Corps of Cadets on an Army ROTC scholarship. I will be studying national security and foreign affairs. Thank you very much, and I hope you all are healthy. So I want to begin with the words of King David in Psalm 62 too. He says, God alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. He says it again in verse six. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. You know, what does it take for us to truly believe this, to live by this truth? You know, for an ancient king to pen these words is astounding. The power, the wealth, the prestige, um, the best military protection from enemies, anything you want, when you want it, all at the hands of one person. But King David knew just how easily shaken any earthly kingdom is. L listen carefully. Everything in our world that can be shaken will be shaken. We've seen this play out so vividly over the past couple months just how quickly lives, careers, financial markets, leaders, countries have been shaken because of a microbe, something you can't even see with the naked eye. You know, Sherry and I uh, learned this past week that a friend of ours, he lost his job and career after 22 years with the same company. His industry decimated. 
Everything in the world that can be shaken will be shaken. No doubt, graduates, you have plans for your future, good plans, and nothing wrong with setting goals and going after it, things we could even recognize as blessings, you know, what the Lord has provided and allowed for us to do and to have. But listen to the wisdom of Proverbs 16, verse 9. It says this, we make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. We make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. I, I think of the great plan I had for my sabbatical this summer. I think of all the work and the prayer that went into that plan. It was a good plan, <laughs> but that plan has been shaken, right? So God has determined something different for my sabbatical this summer. So jobs and financial security can be shaken. Plans can be shaken. Health can be shaken. But does that mean I have to be shaken? My faith in Christ and who I am in Christ. Listen to what Jesus says during his sermon on the Mount. He tells a parable of two kinds of people, a wise person and a foolish person. And in Matthew 7, 24, verse 27 um, Jesus said this. He said, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So very clearly and directly, Jesus said, a wise person will build their house on bedrock. So when, so when not if the storms come, that person's house will not collapse. This is the person who hears the teaching of Jesus and obeys. The other person is a fool. That person builds their house on sand and is easily decimated when the storms come. That person is one who has heard the teachings of Jesus but doesn't listen and obey. Jesus teaches a lot of things and we should pay very, very close attention to every single word and become very familiar with them. But listen more specifically to what Jesus says a little earlier in this very sermon. So Matthew chapter 6 Verses 19 through 20, Jesus says this. He says, don't store up your treasures here on earth where moths eat, excuse me, where moths eat them and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also, your, your heart follows what it treasures. Jesus is saying that if you treasure the things of this world, which is ultimately treasuring yourself, right? Go ahead and build your life on that. Go ahead and follow your heart in that direction and build your very own kingdom on that. For it, it will most definitely turn out that you will eventually realize that it's a house that's built on sand. And that makes you a fool. The treasures of earth won't last. Earthly kingdoms crumble eventually. H however, eternal treasures can't be stolen or destroyed. A heart that follows all that make up the incorruptible and unstoppable kingdom of God, well, that is building on the solid rock of Christ, and you are wise. That is 100% unshakable. You know, the Apostle Paul actually said it best to the Philippian church, um, he says, I once thought that all these things that I had were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value. Listen, infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. Now here's a guy that experienced an incredible amount of hardship, storms in his life. It would be completely understandable if Paul crumbled, but he didn't. His career was shaken. 
His own self-righteousness was shaken. His entire worldview was shaken. His freedom was shaken. His health and wealth was shaken. And all came crashing down, all at the loving, sovereign, rescuing hand of God. Jesus reached Paul, rescued Paul from his own kingdom, and brought him into the unshakable kingdom of Christ. And, you know, and, and as a result, Paul's faith, Paul himself, was unshakable. A true story. Two weeks ago, I had the privilege of connecting with a former student who is now 29 years old. Uh, he reached out to me because Jesus really got his attention over the past couple of months. And he really wanted to talk and process what Jesus was awakening in his heart. This is somebody who is very successful and even well known. And despite all of his accomplishments, he was acknowledging that neglecting his faith over the past 11 years had left him empty and struggling. I, I was listening during the conversation for the indicators of, of transformation or of true repentance. And I gotta tell you, I was thrilled to hear a posture of humility, of gratitude, and a desire to obey God and spend time with him and worship him. You see, years ago, there was a seed planted in this young man's heart, a start to an unshakable foundation in Christ. Yes, he spoke of a deep regret that he didn't spend the last 11 years building on that foundation, but that he was willing now. Uh, the stuff in his life and heart that was built on the stuff of this world and the selfish desires of his heart were being shaken and starting to crumble. They were not withstanding the storm. However, the little bit of God's kingdom in this man's heart remained and was starting to burst forth. Listen, listen to what the writer of Hebrews says about all of this. So Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verses 28 through 29. I love this passage of scripture. It says this, Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. <laughs> there it is. We have been given an unshakable kingdom. This unshakable kingdom was inaugurated when its king, Jesus, first came to the earth and declared that the kingdom of God was among us. Jesus, quoting Isaiah, said this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that the captives will be released, that the blind will see and the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. This unshakable kingdom declared its victory when Jesus died for our sins and rose from the grave, and it will be fully realized and consummated when King Jesus returns to shake one final time all of heaven and earth so that only the things from the eternal unshakable kingdom of God will remain. Verses 26 through 27 in this same passage says this, once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed, so that only unshakable things will remain. I found this quote from an unknown author, and I just want to read it real quick. You belong to a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Throughout history, kings have been overthrown. Leaders have fallen from power. Kingdoms have been conquered. Armies have been defeated. Riches have been depleted. And fortresses have toppled over. It is only in the kingdom of God that anyone can find true rest and security. No rebellion can break down its gates. No weapon can penetrate its borders. And no warrior can come against its king. The way of the kingdom is where your feet can walk. The truth of the kingdom is where your faith can embrace, is what your faith can embrace. The love of the kingdom is what your heart can give away. <laughs> These two verses show us two responses, something for us to take hold of right now. Number one, 
It says, since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful. You know, I believe that ingratitude is often the very first steps away from God. Ingratitude is, is when we shift our eyes off of Christ and all that he has done for us, and we begin to shift our focus on ourselves. We begin to compare ourselves with others, and it leads to a dark path of, of selfishness and of pride, and one that makes us hungry for the never-ending and never-satisfying chase for more and more and more. It's, it's a place of, of ugly entitlement, thinking that God and the rest of the world owes us something and nothing could be further from the truth. God owes you nothing. You deserve nothing. You didn't have to exist, but you do. God's choice to create you wonderfully in his image. You didn't have to be offered salvation and eternal life, but you were because God loved the world so much God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God didn't have to gift you his Holy Spirit to empower you and uh, so that you can represent and perpetuate this incredible goodness of his kingdom in this needy world. But he did. God doesn't need you. He wants you. <laughs> God doesn't need you, he wants you. And so thankfulness is contentment. It leads to love and generosity and the realization that Christ has given us everything. Listen to how Paul says it to the Colossian church, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. What more could a human being ever need? The second response is worship. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. Worship is when we rightfully understand that God is God and we are not that God's ways are higher than our ways, and that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Worship is when we humble ourselves before him and surrender our will and desires to him and walk in his ways. Whether we like it or understand it, we obey. Worship is allowing God to consume us with his purifying fire, shaking all of the impurities away and leaving only the pure gold of his righteousness. What is unshakable? Someone once wrote, maybe Jesus could save me without afflicting me. Maybe the Lord would give me only respectable crosses and manageable thorns. This person is suggesting that this is how we would like Jesus to handle us. But in fact, it is inescapable. Jesus will complete the work he began in us, which means the beautiful and the painful process of shaking us to our core, removing all that is not of him and, and staying in that perfectly loving process of sanctification, that is worship. We worship by keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Graduates, my hope and prayer for you is that you would trust in Christ and live for his kingdom. That you would live for his kingdom purposes all the days of your life. That your career, what you make, where you live, who you marry, etc., all those things wouldn't be your foundation or what you try to build your life upon, but that you would build your foundation on Christ and his unshakable kingdom. And that all of these things would be ways for you to uniquely give glory to King Jesus and represent his kingdom of light in this world that has so much darkness and needs that good news. So may we say with confidence, my God 
is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Check out this special presentation for our graduates. Bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.